What's up, guys? It's MB Boxing. I just finished up watching Frank Sanchez versus F.A. Ajagba, and this was a 10-rounder in the heavyweight division, and this fight was Saturday, October 9th, from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, and this fight was broadcasted on ESPN Plus and Fox Pay-Per-View, and in this fight, Frank Sanchez was able to get a wide, unanimous decision victory over F.A. Ajagba, just like how I predicted in the scorecards were basically identical. So, um, yeah, Frank Sanchez got the job done here. I scored the bout 99 to 90 in favor of Frank Sanchez. The judges scored the bout 98 to 91 twice and 97 to 92 in favor of Sanchez. And just to break down the fight, I mean, this fight wasn't the most action packed fight because both fighters were tentative and both knew that they each had knockout power and were sort of scared to get hit. I mean, obviously. If you're facing either one of those guys, you would not want to get hit. But, I mean, the punch stats ended at, like, just over 100 punches landed for both. But still, Frank Sanchez landed the better of the two. And Frank Sanchez actually was able to drop F.A. Ajagba in the seventh round. But just before that, in the sixth round, Frank Sanchez did slip. And I heard the commentator saying that should have been called a knockout. But it really shouldn't have been because F.A. Ajagba slightly landed a jab just on the nose of Sanchez right when he was throwing a huge hook and he missed and slipped. And, I mean, maybe you could have sort of saw a sort of entanglement with their legs as well. So I thought that was 100% a slip. And I'm happy that in Nevada they did not uh, change it to a knockdown because they do have that replay rule where they are able to change a call made by the referee um, in the middle of the action. But more into that knockdown in the seventh round, F.A. Ajagba got hit with a beautiful right hand from Sanchez while going back. He buckled his leg, got caught with another right hand around the guard, and went down to his knees. But as he was going down to his knees, Frank Sanchez threw a uppercut that um, did land on Ajagba, and good thing Ajagba was able to take that, because if he wasn't, maybe we could have saw a DQ or a no con or uh, anything like that, a DQ most likely, not a no contest, but um, yeah, I mean, F.A. Ajagba took that shot somehow when he was basically on his knees, but the referee called it a knockdown, and it really was a knockdown. I mean, Frank Sanchez was just caught in the heat of the moment when he was throwing punches, and I mean, I'm sure he had an adrenaline rush when he was able to hurt and drop a Jogba, and he landed that uppercut. A Jogba took it, like I was saying before. He got back up. Referee um, didn't really give a count, but he still called it a knockdown, made sure Jogba was okay from that shot, but it was good refereeing in my opinion. But then later on, a Jogba's corner was just yelling at him to continue or just to come forward, and they they were just saying, you need a knockout, you need to get uh, one shot and knock Sanchez out, but he just couldn't. He was just getting countered when he was um, trying to land right hands of his own. I mean, Frank Sanchez was just able to just come forward and just land shots on Ajagba at will sometimes. I mean, Ajagba was just no match for Sanchez's skills. Like I said in my prediction video, Sanchez um, has the ring IQ, the speed, and all that. Uh, I mean, that just accumulates for a great... Um, advantage for him, and I, I mean, when I saw them initially, when the bell rang in the first round, I was thinking, wow, Jabba is much bigger than Sanchez, but it reminded me of Usyk Joshua, where he was just able to touch him on the outside, land big shots, hurt him multiple times, and Jabba did take a lot of great overhand rights from Sanchez, props to him, but he did get dropped ultimately in the fight, um, and, um, yeah, Frank Sanchez, what is next for him getting this career-defining victory? What a win this is, giving it F.A. Jogba's first ever defeat. Uh, I think he should fight someone in the top 15, top 10. Jogba's somewhere around there as well. This definitely puts Sanchez in that position. He's currently ranked, I believe, number 5 or number 4 by the WBO. Who knows? He could fight the winner of Derek Chisora versus Joe Parker. He could fight like a guy like Carlos Takam. Maybe even Robert Hellenius, who just got a great win over um, Adam Kovnatsky on this card. He, I mean, he could fight, fight a lot of guys. Maybe even Chris Ariola, Luis Ortiz, anyone in that PBC stable. Um, but yeah, he got this great victory, and he's definitely due for another um, great win next. And he showed that, I mean, he's able to box, he's able to brawl, he's able to show power as well. Great performance by him. But what is next for F.A. Ajagba? Losing here for the first time in dominant fashion, wasn't really able to do much to Frank Sanchez. The only right hand he did land was, I believe, in the <coughs> eighth round. Um, sorry about that, but um, yeah, I mean, he wasn't really able to do too much to Frank Sanchez, but um, yeah, I mean, Frank Sanchez ultimately got the great victory, but Ajagba, I just don't really know what's next for him. I, I don't think he's going to retire, obviously, but I could see him fighting a lower-level opponent on, like, a top rank undercard, um, maybe someone at the level of like a Don Hainsworth, like a lower level journeyman like fighter. I mean, he could fight maybe Trey Lippy Morrison. That would be an interesting fight that a drive would definitely knocks him out in. Uh, and that would just be a good, 
um, resume booster, but um, yeah, I can't really see him fighting in a big fight next after coming off a loss like this. So overall, Frank Sanchez defeats F.A. Ajagba by unanimous decision to get his 19th victory and the best of his career so far. And uh, yeah, that's really it. I'm MB Boxing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.